Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to stage Orange County Community Foundation President and CEO, Shelley Haas. Welcome everyone. I'm so thrilled that you could be with us here today. I feel like I can feel you even though I can't see you and you're gonna need to take all that great energy and love that I know you're feeling to be here together and just you're gonna have to put it right into the chat because that's the way we have to communicate with each other while we're here today. But just like we did last year in virtual mode, we're gonna make that work again here today. I'm happy to say for those of us who were with us last year, you might remember that I got a text from my beloved former board member Kelly Holman in the middle of doing my introduction and I like was distracted and then I read her text off of my watch in the middle of my intro. So she was so thoughtful. She already texted me an hour ago to wish me well so she wouldn't distract me. So we're gonna try to stay on track. We're, we're live. So whatever happens, happens. And we're just so thrilled that you are with us today and know that we're gonna create the same sense of community and connection. and. I am so excited about um, what we're going to experience together today. Of course, I've gotten to see a preview and I'm just like uh, bursting with excitement about what we're gonna experience together. The hour's gonna go fast and we are going to experience um, truly the best that Orange County has to bring. And we're so thrilled to be able to do that together. So, as those of you who may be long timers at our annual meeting know, we usually start with a live artistic performance. Last year we were new at this and we couldn't get our act together uh, quick enough to make that happen. So we replayed that wonderful children's choir, Voices of Hope, to just sort of ground us. But we have figured it out. And today I am so thrilled that we have a live performance to start our program. Okay, so fast fact. Did you know that Orange County has our own Poet Laureate? I have to confess I did not, so now you can go impress your friends and neighbors that you know it too. And even better, she is here with us today. Natalie J. Graham earned her master's degree in creative writing from the University of Florida and her PhD in American Studies at Michigan State University as a distinguished fellow. Now on faculty here at Cal State Fullerton, Natalie chairs the African American Studies Department and leads the Institute of Black Intellectual Innovation, which received a grant from our very own African American Alliance Fund, founded by our COO, Tammy Tumbling. Natalie is an award-winning author and performer who has toured nationally with her collection of poems, Begin With a Failed Body. This August, she was appointed Orange County's first ever poet laureate. We are so honored that Natalie is joining us today to perform an original work that she composed just for this event today, Consider the Way. Please help me welcome to the stage, Natalie J. Graham. Consider the Way. In the grip of the grind, we find ourselves stuck in the crank of worry, wound in the anxious scrape and groan of its gears, the noisy engine of fear and its dull, regular vibrations shuddering the drums of our bodies. Here is where we find ourselves in front of an unknown path, a cloud of unrelenting clatter alarming around us. Come, consider another song. Come and see the choir of light tumbling through a canopy of trees, your open hand rustling the dazzling drizzle of leaves the familiar sounds of invisible animals, the hum and crunch of the world beyond the clutch and grind. Can you see it? The magic of light, peace, already here, falling like a glimmering twirl of leaves into your hands. And farther, a river, think of it 
a river wandering through, cutting the path into the momentary bloom of lather, snapping white against the rocks. This river trumpeting its water song, its spray catching that same light, the gleaming slick of water, this lush joy and more here in the soil, the green wriggle of life shaking a flower's velvet brim and more the glistening stem pointing farther still. You see it now, a tiny gallop of wind threads a hill of poppies that gather their nodding heads, waving and leaning on wiry stems. The fluted petals alive like joy in the wind. Consider yourself the type to lay in the poppies and whisper to the petals nuzzling each to each just above your head dance. You tell them, absurd as it is, you say aloud, dance. And they do. Alive in the same sun, so bright now that you have to close your eyes and your whole body touching the ground, a new rumble, something deep, thrumming the whole heart of the world in the petals of this flower, in the leaves, in the water, the wind flickering across the field, the song of the world thrumming deep joy, hope, peace, a new season gleaming in the wet shimmer of grass. Thank you so much, Natalie. Oh, wow. Um, how amazing that we have all now gotten to experience the power that is spoken word. I am so grateful for Natalie being with us today and getting to end on these thoughts of joy, hope, and peace. What better prayer could there be for ourselves, our community, and our world in this moment? So Natalie, thank you for grounding us and our time together in that. And now it is my great pleasure to welcome our new board chair, Dan Bolar. Dan has served on our board for seven years, blending his financial and accounting acumen with a deep and heartfelt commitment to our community. Dan has served in many leadership roles on our board, and I'm thrilled that for the next two years, he will be my close partner and my co-conspirator for good as he chairs our board of governors. Please help me welcome to the podium, Dan Bolar. Thank you, Shelly. Uh, what a tough act to follow. Following Shelly is tough enough, but I had to follow Natalie as well. Is that fair? I don't think so, but uh, great job, Natalie. Um, I don't know if you heard uh, how Shelly described me, that my position was the, a co-conspirator for good. That's awesome. That is totally awesome. I am gonna introduce a bylaws change to change my title from board chair to co-conspirator for good. What, what a better job than that is. Uh, it is an honor and privilege to be not only on this board, but to get to serve the next two years as the board chair. Uh, I can still remember seven years ago having my recruiting board lunch with uh, four other board members and Shelley, and little did I know that I would be at this podium today. My first official act, though, is going to be to thank our former board chair, Rashma Block, for her amazing service over the last two years. Uh, I love Rashma. She is smart funny, a visionary, a great leader. She cares greatly about this organization. 
uh, and she cares about this community. And, uh, and she had to do her two years almost entirely during the pandemic. And wouldn't you know it, she pulled it off. We had way too many Zoom meetings just like you all have had. But uh, Reshma, thank you for all of your service. Um, I, uh, you have set a very high bar and I hope to get even close to that bar. Um, while I'm at this podium, I'd also like to thank my fellow officers for the next two years, Rashid Chamtier uh, of Deloitte, who is our vice chair, and John Williams from Gibson, Dunn and Crutcher, who is our finance chair. The three of us have the honor of working together with an extraordinary group of colleagues on the Board of Governors. It is truly a great pleasure to show up and be at meetings and to work with these folks on committees. They're talented, they're passionate, they're visionary, they're smart, and it's just a great group of people. Their diligence, commitment, and integrity make them invaluable assets to our work and to the entire Orange County community. Speaking of a great board, I'd like to give a special welcome to our newest board member, Ambassador Gaddy Vasquez. We're so glad to have Gaddy here with us today to share a few thoughts on the impact he hopes to make as a part of OCCF's board. Gaddy, thanks for saying yes to this call. My aspiration and hope as a board member is to be able to bring the perspective of someone who has, one, grown up in Orange County, uh, served in the public and in the private sector in elected office. Uh, I began my career in Orange County as a police officer, so I have patrolled its streets, public protection, public safety, uh, and right or wrong, sad or indifferent, I've had a front row seat uh, to the challenges and the opportunities that exist for us in Orange County and to be able to participate on a board that uh, is a meaningful and valued voice uh, to the progress and to the advancement of the mission of OCCF is a great honor and I hope I'm able to be part of that process to be able to articulate the perspective of someone who has grown up in Orange County, who has served in elected office in Orange County, who has been an executive of a large uh, corporation, uh, but also has a deep passion and deeply rooted uh, to the things that are important uh, to Orange County, as the county has given me much to celebrate, I want to be able to contribute as a board member to enhance, to build, uh, and to grow opportunities, uh, not only for OCCF, but for the people of Orange County as well. Thank you, Gaddy. We are all looking forward to working with you over the years ahead. Now, as we get to celebrate new members joining the board, we also have to go the other direction. We had the sad task of saying goodbye to board members who have completed or are completing their final term. Uh, this year, we have to say farewell to three extraordinary board members who have served on our board for the past nine years. First, Dr. Alberto Mineta, who brought his extensive knowledge of community health and a passion for the value and promise of our immigrant communities. Second, Susanna Vakili, who chaired our fund distribution committee for her entire nine years on our board helping to guide our strategy for community impact. And finally, to Keith Swain, who not only was a former board chair, but who holds a unique place in our history as the husband of our founder, Judy Swain. At our September board meeting just a couple of months ago, we held a virtual celebration for these retiring board members, and I'd like to share a few special comments from Keith reflecting his experience on our board. I've had a unique opportunity to be with this community foundation from its inception till now, from when it was a, an idea that Judy had that I couldn't quite understand what it was she wanted to do and had no idea how she was going to pull it off till here we are today. And I'm extremely grateful for having the opportunity to be involved with the community foundation vicariously in those early years and then these nine years on the board and the two years as the chair, I take it as a uh, something special in my life. It's one of the highlights of my, of my journey. Mm -hmm. The community foundation has come a long, long ways from Judy thinking about forming it. And I have no doubts that it's just gonna grow dramatically and it's going to have an increasingly important role, not just in Orange County, but among all community foundations. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, Dan, that as you bring new people on, the quality of the board is going to continue to be outstanding. And somebody nine years from now is going to be saying the same thing I'm saying about the board as they leave the board. 
We've been incredibly blessed by Keith's, Susanna's, and Alberto's leadership on our board. And if I know anything about Shelly Haas, I know how close she keeps her former board members. And so I know the three of you won't be going very far. Before I turn the podium back over, I want to acknowledge the outstanding staff and leadership team at OCCF who share their tremendous enthusiasm, dedication, and expertise day in and day out with our donors and the hundreds of local nonprofit organizations with which we have the pleasure of working. And I had a reminder of that just yesterday when I was at the office signing checks and I get to peop see people I care about deeply every time I show up. You put your heart and soul in your work each day and all of us in the Orange County community are the better for it. I would also like to recognize our CEO, Shelly Haas, for her amazing leadership for the past many, many years. Uh, it's joyful to work with Shelly. I'm proud, and I'll tell you a secret. One of the best things about being the board chair is not only do I get to be at meetings with her, I get to see her once a month to figure out what she's cooked up the previous month. But I guarantee you it's for the greater good. I want to thank all of you for being here with us today. Thank you for taking the time to experience the Orange County Community Foundation's second annual vir virtual annual meeting. But most importantly, thank you for your engagement in our community, for your commitment to strengthening Orange County for all of our residents. Shelley, back to you. Thank you so much. Dan, I mean, how could you not loving for an organization when you get to have someone like that for your board chair? It is such a privilege to lead OCCF together with our full staff team and with Dan's leadership and, and our amazing board. So back in the days when we were all together in that ballroom together, this would be the time that I would direct your attention to the annual report at your uh, places. They will be arriving in your mailboxes shortly, but in the meantime, we're going to take a walk through the highlights together today, and you'll be able to access the report online through a link that we'll be sending out to you after today's event, as well as uh, posting it in the chat today. The theme for our 2021 annual report is the way forward, giving our all for Orange County's future. And besides just all of us, I know being ready to think about uh, our purpose for the future and coming out of the period we've been in. Our inspiration was a quote from Albert Camus. Real generosity toward the future lies in giving our all to the present. And since generosity is at the heart of all we do at OCCF, this seemed like the perfect theme, both for reflecting on the past year, uh, but charting a course for the year ahead. Uh, we're going to share now today three key highlights from this year's report, starting with our 2021 financial highlights, followed by the uh, eye-popping results from our I Heart OC Giving Days, which we couldn't have imagined uh, how far they would grow when we started. And then finally, the, the big amazing finale will be an in-studio fireside chat about our workforce development initiative and a really exciting new direction with one of our treasured community partners. To start us off, it's my great pleasure to introduce the dynamic duo that keeps OCCF on track and serving our highest purpose for the Orange County community every day. Our Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer, Tammy Tumling, and Chief Financial Officer, Tracy Branson. For more than 30 years, Tracy has used her accounting superpowers to ensure that OCCF serves as an impeccable steward of the charitable assets entrusted to our care. From joining us in our infancy to her recent honor as the Orange County Business Journal's nonprofit CFO of the year, Tracy's eagle eyes are one of our greatest assets. And Tammy, who joined our, our team two years ago, came from a stellar 21-year career with Southern California Edison. As thrilled as I was for the strategic and managerial skills Tammy was bringing to our team, I could never have imagined how much we would need her experience, her wisdom, and steady hand when the pandemic had the audacity to descend within six months of her arrival. We are doubly blessed indeed to have this team. Tammy and Tracy, please take it away.
Thank you, Shelley. I'm delighted to present this year's financial report with Tracy because it clearly demonstrates Orange County's compassion and commitment to meeting the challenges our community has faced, especially over the last year and a half. I have the honor of leading our team members who partner with donors to grow the good in Orange County and beyond, as well as OCCF's initiatives to address our community's pressing needs. The passion for giving demonstrated by our donors is truly inspiring, and they've blown us away again this year with their generosity. Driving OCCF to $98 million in grants and scholarships awarded in fiscal year 21. This outpouring of generosity has resulted in $200 million in granting by OCCF over the last two years. To put that in context, it took us 22 years to reach the $200 million mark in cumulative granting, and now we've granted the same amount in just 24 months. I call that an inspiring growth curve and a testament to the generosity of our community, which has continued to place OCCF in the top 2% in grant making among 780 community foundations, granting more than all but 14 other community foundations in the nation. This brings OCCF's cumulative granting since 1989 to $830 million, a total which has nearly doubled over the past five years. And that means we're well on our way to reaching our goal of $1 billion in total grants and scholarships by our 35th anniversary in 2024, which will make us one of only 35 community foundations in the nation to have reached that milestone. So thanks to the incredible partners we have with all who are part of the OCCF family, we're well on our way. Thank you to all you do to grow the good in Orange County and beyond, our extraordinary donors and nonprofits alike. And now, to continue the OCCF story, over to my partner, Tracy. Thank you so much, Tammy. You're a hard act to follow. Even with the record-breaking granting of the past two years, we achieved a major milestone when OCCF's assets crossed the $500 million mark for the first time on June 30th, 2021. And this trend has continued, with total assets reaching over $540 million as of September 30th. This confirms OCCF's position as one of the largest and fastest growing community foundations in the nation, ranking in the top 7% in assets among our 780 community foundation peers. One of the most important aspects of OCCF's stewardship is diligent investment oversight. Strong investment performance not only protects charitable assets for the benefit of our community, but allows their impact to grow over time. OCCF fulfills this responsibility through a stellar investment committee and our independent advisors at Cambridge Associates. Our one-year return at June 30 was nearly 30%, with the three- and five-year annualized returns exceeding 10%. A particularly bright spot over the past two years has been our environment, social, and governance investment pool. Our one-year return at June 30th was nearly 31.5%, compared to a policy benchmark of 26.5%. If you have an OCCF fund and are interested in having your fund invested in our ESG pool, I'd love to hear from you. Through both the good years and the challenging ones, we are incredibly proud to faithfully steward Orange County's charitable resources. It is a privilege to be your partners in philanthropy. And now I'll hand the podium back over to you, Shelley. Thank you so much, Tracy and Tammy. We truly get to see the best of the head and the heart at OCCF. One of the most inspiring examples of Orange County's generosity grew out of an idea we had during our 25th anniversary year in 2015 about a way to bring our community together to show Orange County nonprofits our love. 
how this one-time experiment has grown and the promise and potential it holds for the future has gone beyond anything we could have imagined when we first started. Let's watch the journey of how our iHeart OC Giving Days have grown together. Well, I don't think anyone will be surprised when I say the causes closest to my heart are around healthy children. I'd like to see every baby come into this world strong and ready to learn and to grow up and meet all their potential. That's my passion. The impact that I hope to see through my work is I really want to help change the way dying people live. End of life is truly about living and we're dedicated to making each moment count. I'm really passionate about working with homeless families because when you meet the kids, you can't believe it. Um, when we bring them to their new home and they cross over the threshold, they say, is that bed really for me? Do I get my own blanket? Because they've literally been sleeping in their car and they can't believe that someone cares enough to give them a place to sleep No tonight. one agency can do this all by themselves. You need to have that community around you. And what OCCF did was give us a chance to all come together to build our community of agency centered around children and make the best of it and have fun with it. I am so excited to talk about the Giving Days with the Community Foundation. It was thrilling to bring 16 agencies together and to speak with one voice to Orange County. And we were able in one day to raise more than $740,000. It was incredible. The $15 million mobilized just so far for local nonprofits, more than half of that has just been in the last year, is although so impressive is just one part of the story. Just as important is the investment we've been able to make in strengthening local nonprofits' ability to collaborate on their fundraising, leveraged online giving tools, and up their social media game. Building the long-term capacity of local nonprofits is actually the real win here. As OCCF transitioned from being the hub for a single countywide day of giving to a catalyst for 10 annual community-based giving days, organized and led by the nonprofits themselves, just with our support in the background, the growth is clearly just accelerating from here. And we can't wait to see what the future holds for iHeartOC, all of the nonprofits who've made it their own and the most important beneficiaries in our community. So now we get to move to a topic I am so excited to share with all of you. It has become near and dear to OCCF's heart over the past several years building pathways of economic opportunity through workforce development, especially for young people disconnected from school and work. I'm so delighted now to introduce OCCF's VP for Donor Relations and Programs, Kathleen Otero, to give us an inside look at this important work. Thank you, Shelley, and thank you to all of you who are joining from your offices and homes today. OCCF's commitment to workforce development began fundamentally as a vision of our homegrown young talent, being able to work, live, and thrive in Orange County. 
well before the pandemic. We were tracking workforce indicators on thousands of living wage jobs that were going unfilled each year that only required a two-year college degree. It was the availability of these middle skills jobs that led to the launch of our workforce development initiative in 2019. Our initial efforts were aimed at creating pipelines for community college students to acquire credentials and certificates that lead to high quality middle skills jobs. A living wage can elevate the circumstances of individuals and families to help them not just survive but thrive and become active participants in the economic and civic life of Orange County. But to truly advance economic opportunities for our region, workforce development inherently has to include entrepreneurship. Here again, there is a huge opportunity to tap into local talent. In the same way that we crafted a strategy for investing in pipelines for middle skills jobs, we began exploring opportunities to support small businesses. Small businesses are not only job creators, but they rent, represent individuals and families trying to just create a sustainable income. For OCCF, investing in minority-owned small businesses is inherently about elevating the lives and earning potential of local families. Through the pandemic, we saw the disproportionate health and economic impacts in our low-income immigrant and minority communities. And we saw how minority-owned small businesses lacked not only the capital, but the knowledge and technical resources to survive the pandemic. We knew this presented a unique challenge and opportunity to understand and attempt to meet the needs of our minority-owned small business community. But we can't do this alone. And it was important for us to partner with organizations who are themselves trusted partners in the community. And that brings us to Cielo. Cielo is a grassroots organization that empowers hardworking Orange County residents to pursue economic self-sufficiency through entrepreneurship. Cielo grew out of the Oakview Renewal Partnership, a place-based community service corporation engaged within a one square mile low income community in the city of Huntington Beach, and now is a critical hub for small business incubation. Here with me to discuss a unique community-based approach to entrepreneurship is Yosefa Alofaituli, Executive Director and Co-Founder of Cielo. Welcome, Yosefa. Welcome, Yosefa. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Can you start by telling us a little bit about the community you serve, why entrepreneurship is important to them, and how Cielo helps? Yeah. Well, thank you, Kathleen, and thank you to the Orange County Community Foundation for providing us this platform to share not Cielo's story, but the story of many entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, this this has been a long time coming. Uh, having started this journey, you know, 12 years ago with uh, the support of on my mentor Jack Shaw and partnering with the Community Foundation uh, from then until now and uh, we're just so grateful to again be able to tell the story. So Cielo's focus is on individuals in Orange County who live in under-resourced communities like where we started in Oakview. Mm -hmm. um, that has primarily been immigrants, people of color, uh, and women with lower incomes and through our grassroots engagement we've learned that much of the mindset and characteristics of successful entrepreneurs are inherent to the folks who live in these neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. They've developed resilience, resourcefulness, and this relentless determination just to survive. Uh, entrepreneurship is a proven pathway towards economic stability and freedom. And for those we serve, it's, more, uh, it's a more dignified path um, than working three minimum wage jobs just to get by. So we help our clients leverage their inherent entrepreneurial spirit and translate those strengths into launching small businesses. Our amazing team at Cielo does this through educational courses, workshops, one-on-one -on -one coaching, and case management, on top of connections to dozens of other small business service providers. Since we launched uh, five years ago under the leadership of our first CEO, John Hobson, we've served 2,700 individuals and helped 300 of them launch their businesses or become launch ready. Wow, 
300 businesses launched or, or, or in the pipeline. That's incredible. Can you tell us why are small business owners so important to the economic vitality of this region? So first of all, small businesses make up over half of private sector jobs. Mm -hmm. But more specifically, in under-resourced communities, there's direct impact on the local economy. So through small business creation, there's a robust ripple effect, right? Where um, uh, it incre there's an increase in income for the business owner and their family. Uh, there is an increase in job creation, which largely comes from that local community, and an increase in local B2B or business-to-business -business spending, uh, and ultimately increased sales tax uh, that, uh, that returns back to this local economy. So you know, ultimately, the impact of these types of enterprises stays where it's needed the most locally. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are also more tangible impacts, like going from a house cleaner to a business owner, moving from an overcrowded apartment to a house. Mm. Incredible stories of impact, I'm sure. You know, you recently introduced our team to a few of your CLO clients. Let's meet one of them together. Hi, my name is Liliana Peña. I had my business, it's me as Caitlin Event, here to help you. And we need more clients. Uh, <laughs> Liliana seems like a natural salesperson. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about her story? So before pursuing the, the life of an entrepreneur, Liliana was in a situation like many folks we serve uh, are in, overworked and underpaid. Mm -hmm. um, she, she held multiple jobs to stay afloat, serving tables, uh, working in the backs of kitchens, staffing different events, cleaning houses, and other side hustles to support her three kids at home in their cramped up apartment. But as she puts it, she wanted a better life for her family. That's what inspired her to pursue this path of entrepreneurship. And she decided to use her experiences and skills from all these different jobs I mentioned to start her own catering and events business. However, one of the biggest challenges for her at the time, uh, which, which was just a couple years ago, was that she didn't really speak any English and that language barrier made the journey hard. Uh, so she did what she needed to do. She enrolled in Eng English classes as the first step, but then after that didn't really understand how to navigate the system to start a business. And that's when she connected with Cielo. Uh, Cielo supported Liliana by guiding her through the different steps, many steps, um, of getting all the permits and licenses. Uh, and after that, Liliana, uh, landed her first gig. Uh, it was a, a, a quinceanera, you know, a big 15th birthday party mm -hmm. for over 300 people. Um, she has since continued to grow her customer base and overall business, and now she's got a catering truck, as you saw in the, in the video. Uh, she also has a catering van to go along with that. Um, Liliana has a new goal now of having a, an event venue that would have the space and the entertainment, the food, the drinks, to host all kinds of events. But the greatest outcome for her since launching two years ago is that she was able to move from a small crowded apartment to a spacious home. Mm -hmm. And in that home, she's now able to be more present for her three daughters and two dogs. Um, as a matter of fact, Liliana named the business after one of her daughters, which is why the business is called Mia's Catering. I love that, naming the business after her daughter because the whole purpose is about making a better life for her family. Yeah. Um, I hear you talking about some of the challenges that um, Liliana overcame to create her business. What are some of the business, biggest challenges that are facing small business entrepreneurs that you support? Well, first is you know, a lack of a trusted partner um, and a, a community that believes in them. Mm. There are thousands of Lilianas out there, but mm. our small business ecosystem isn't focused on them. And, and that's a huge missed opportunity. And in Orange County, we have a vibrant uh, entrepreneurship ecosystem, but it's catered primarily to the high tech and high growth entrepreneur, not those creating service-based businesses in neighborhoods of color like Oakview, where they're starting childcare businesses, landscaping, business services, food carts, and, and catering like, like Liliana. Mm -hmm. um, and you need to connect with these aspiring entrepreneurs on the grounds. Um, on the streets of these neighborhoods, that's where you build trust. Um, and and our, our clients 
sometimes lack the social network uh, that would connect them to trusted partners and the, those that would help guide and support them through uh, this, this confusing process of launching and, and, and growing a business. And mm -hmm. that's what Cielo does. We are that trusted business partner, mentor, coach. Wow, such an incredible bench of talent, again, that I'm sure that um, we should be investing further in. You know, what do you wish that Orange County knew about what is really happening on the ground with these small business owners? And what do you believe people would be surprised to learn? Yeah, um, it's, it's pretty difficult to truly understand the, the number and variety of obstacles in life that these entrepreneurs have to overcome just mm -hmm. to get by, um, much less start or launch their own small business. Let's, let's first consider the wealth gap, right? Um, white families have five to eight times the wealth of Latinx and black families. Uh, combine that with uh, lower credit scores and less assets, you then find yourself with folks who are underbanked and some are unbanked. And, and while two thirds of all entrepreneurs use their you know, social network, their personal or family savings to start businesses, the entrepreneurs we serve don't have that luxury mm -hmm. because uh, you know, they lack, many of them lack that capital, that financial capital and social capital. Mm -hmm. So not only is, is education and technical assistance inaccessible for, for those we serve, but they also can't access the funding they need to fuel their businesses. Mm. Well, that's a stark picture you're painting. It's incredible how these entrepreneurs beat the odds in these instances. You know, let's meet another one of your clients who have been able to break through despite these challenges. Mi nombre es Omar Ruiz. And I'm Teresa Patino, and we own TP Forward Finishing. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa is just the sweetest spirit. Um, mm. And, you know, up until a couple of years ago, Teresa was cleaning homes, as she says, throughout Newport Beach. Uh, while Omar was working for a company that did wood finishing. Um, and it was Omar who initiated the idea of potentially starting their own wood finishing business because he was just tired of working for someone else. Um, but Teresa, as she told me, was not too fond of this idea because neither of them had any clue on how to start. Um, and they didn't have the resources to invest in a business. And Teresa said that she was scared. Um, however, she, you know, she began to warm up to the idea once Omar's sister introduced them to Cielo, mm -hmm. which at the time was helping that sister with setting up her house cleaning business. And Teresa said Cielo helped them plan for the business, develop a, a marketing strategy, and provided that needed morale support throughout the startup process because sometimes it could, not sometimes, but often that process is grueling, it's painful. Um, and, and as she said, it, it, she was scared even once they started. Mm -hmm. um, and so Cielo uh, even helped Teresa and, and Omar with computer classes um, so that they could learn how to create an email address um, and use the computer for other types of business needs. And so while they were planning for the business, they also had a chance to start putting money away, mm. right? So she was still cleaning houses, he was still working for that business, for that company, uh, and they were putting money away to cover the various startup expenses that were gonna come along with the new business. And although it took, um, what did you say, two to three months of hardcore cold calling, you know, distributing flyers throughout Huntington Beach on foot uh, and networking with a bunch of different folks in the construction industry, after all that, they finally landed one client. Mm. Um, uh, but from there, word of mouth spread about the high quality work that Omar was doing. Uh, and they eventually established a steady flow of customers. Um, Teresa said that it's crazy to her how she went from not knowing anything about computers or business uh, to getting to a point where she left her cleaning job and became a business owner. Mm. Talk about dignified journey. Mm. Uh, now she manages all of the admin work, including you know sales and invoices and basic financial management. 
Um, and, and by the way, Teresa, the one that didn't want to do this, uh, she's the namesake of this business as the T and the P are her initials. Wow. Um, and one other cool thing is that they live in Oakview where, and their shop is right across from Oakview Elementary School. And it's at Oakview Elementary School where this all got started, where Cielo was incubated. Um, Omar says that uh, their next go, uh, goal is to expand beyond Huntington Beach, to open a second shop maybe in North or South County uh, and continue to, to grow that customer base. Wow. I'm seeing the theme here of the way that Cielo takes an individual's passion and translate it into a vision for the future. And so I'm wondering, as you think about Cielo's future, you know, what's your vision? And you know, given that we have an audience here of potential partners and philanthropists, what's the role that philanthropy can play and what comes next? Well, um, again, we, we greatly appreciate this, this platform to share. Uh, our vision is to have a vibrant and accessible entrepreneurship ecosystem here in Orange County that values the, the Teresas, the Omars, and the Lilianas as job creators, as small business leaders, as community leaders. Mm -hmm. um, Cielo is on a mission to mobilize Orange County to get there. Uh, and to support our pursuit here in the next year, we are launching two new initiatives. Uh, one is called The Source, which is a digital mentorship and educational platform designed to be accessible to those in under-resourced communities. Um, I make that distinction because a lot of tools and resources have gone digital, mm -hmm. specifically for small businesses. Mm -hmm. But as you know, the tech world will tell you, the software developers, it's very difficult to translate the, the opportunities to the folks that we serve at Cielo. Mm -hmm. And so it is our intention, our desire, our purpose to create a digital platform that's accessible to all. Um, and then the second initiative that we're developing this year is our micro fund. Uh, we want to create uh, access to grants and microloans specifically for the types of entrepreneurs we serve. Again, immigrants, uh, people of color, uh, folks with lower incomes. Um, and then as a result of this collective effort, right, not Cielo, um, this collective effort, uh, over the next three to five years, uh, we, d we, we, we studied the economics and we're projecting um, significant economic impact resulting uh, from these efforts. 450 new businesses, 2,200 new jobs, and these uh, businesses and jobs would help to uh, generate an economic output of $500 million. Um, and that's through you know, increased revenue, uh, spending, uh, suppliers, tax revenue. Uh, and so, yeah, this is a really exciting moment for, for, for Cielo. That's great. Yeah, I think we might have another minute for just one more question. Um, before we wrap, I just got an email from Cielo about a new business launching in Orange and sort of a celebration that you're bringing around that. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm glad that our team went faster so we had this extra time. Um, yeah, so Vicky's Salon. Uh, Vicky has been working with uh, uh, Cielo for, for a couple of years now, um, and we helped her sort of secure a location to launch this, this salon, along with other support like um, uh, permits and licenses. And uh, we're, ha we're helping to launch a grand opening mm -hmm. for that salon Next week, I, I'm hoping our team will drop it in the chat so that anyone who's available, we're partnering with the Chamber of Commerce of Orange uh, to put this on. And, and the idea here is we're, we're sort of piloting this because we would love the opportunity to bring out those life-size scissors and ribbons to all of our clients' uh, grand openings, and we invite everybody. So it starts uh, next week, uh, uh, December 8th, and, and the information should be dropped in the chat. Uh, but Vicky's another one who, whose resilience, whose tenacity, whose courage, whose bravery really drives this work that you know, I get to do and our team gets to do every day. And I saw that you're also bringing in other Cielo clients. Yes, good point. So our caterer, yeah, our caterer, our DJ, our deck balloon artist, they're all Cielo clients. And so it's really a, a community effort. Um, and, and our Cielo community continues to build and we thank um, uh, you know, potential uh, partners for joining us Great. as well.
I think I saw Mia's catering going to be there too. Mia's so. catering. <laughs> Liliana will be there for awesome. sure. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks. That's such an inspiring vision, Yosefa. And thank you so much for being here with us today. It's so exciting um, to think about what the future holds for the community because of your work. Um, and so with that, I'm going to turn it back over to you, Shelley. Thank you so much, Kathleen and Yosefa. Boy, talk about the way forward for our community. We are so blessed to have the kind of nonprofit sector we do in Orange County filled with visionary leaders whose passion to create a more vibrant and equitable community is building a future where all of our residents have the opportunity to thrive. And I can't wait to see the progress that Cielo and other partners will have. Um, and it's truly our privilege to get to um, be a small part of their story. So if you've been uh, to our annual meeting before, uh, most of the time, you know, I don't uh, script any kind of a closing. I just have a big spot in the script that says, you know, ad lib. And uh, that was my plan for today. But I, uh, when I put the, the almost final version of the script to bed and it was late and I was just sort of scrolling online, I saw this post by uh, our friend Don Price of the Friendship Shelter. And it really, it moved me, it struck me as the perfect way to close our time together today. So anthropologist Margaret Mead was apparently uh, once asked by a student what she considered to be the first sign of civilization in a uh, culture. Uh, the student expected me to talk about, you know, implements and tools, fix, fish hooks or clay pots or, you know, grinding stones for cooking. But instead, Mead said that the first sign of civilization in any ancient culture was a femur, a thigh bone, that had been broken and then healed. Mead explained that in the animal kingdom, if you break your leg, that is the end of the story for your life. You can't run from danger, you can't get to the river for water, you can't hunt for food. You become prey for other animals. No wild animal survives a broken leg long enough for that bone to heal. So a broken femur that has healed completely is evidence that someone took time to stay with the one who had fallen, had bound up the wound, carried that person to safety and, and tended to them to the, throughout their recovery. Helping someone else through their difficulty when they'd fallen is what Mead said, where civilization starts. And I can't think of a better idea to focus on at a time when I think we're searching anywhere we can find it for civility, for signs of, of civilization and humanity toward one another. We can remember that this act of helping one who has fallen, one who might be more vulnerable, need a safety net, need a helping hand, that is where our shared humanity begins. And so as we close our time together, I am just sending my love out to each and every one of you. We all cannot wait to be safely, uh, healthfully back together again in that, you know, squeezed in in that ballroom, elbow to elbow and sort of heart to heart. Uh, but I'm, I'm so grateful until we can be in that sort of a room that we can be in in this room. And so as I uh, wish you all a safe, and healthy, and joyful holiday season. Some of our friends are already celebrating Hanukkah, the rest of us getting ready to uh, march into full holiday season. Just know that we are sending our gratitude out to you. We are so honored to be your partner. We are blessed to be able to build the way forward for our community with each of you who we consider part of the OCCF family. And so with that, I wish you a wonderful day. So grateful for you spending your time together with us. Send us a message in the chat. It'll be open for a bit. If there's anything you wanna say, want us to know for next year, anything we could improve. I certainly hope that by next year, we will be actually um, together in that room and re-experiencing what it is to be 
connected heart to heart. Thank you so much for being with us here today. God bless and be well.